in 1932, this community was looking for any way that they could get in the middle of the Depression people to come to Laguna Beach and be interested in possibly buying art from the local artists. And a festival of arts was proposed. It was a lot of fun. It was a parade of people dressed up all in support of creating a place where the local artists could sell their wares. And one of the many gimmicks they came up with as far as entertainment was this idea of doing living pictures. And in 1933, they added the spirit of the master's pageant. The festival and the pageant have become this complementary showcase and celebration of traditions in art on a community level and traditions in art on an international and human level. I originally got involved with the pageant when I got a call out of the blue from the director of the pageant in 1981. He was describing this event that takes place in Orange County where living pictures are created. He said, come to a rehearsal. Then I saw the caliber of work that was invested in the tableaus and immediately I knew that I was working with people who really had a dedication to this historical footnote of theater art, but doing it on such a scale that it was really more than just a gimmick or a magic trick where you see how it's done. Standing at his enormous canvas, the court painter looks out at us, contemplating his noble subjects whose reflections had just been made out in a mirror on the far wall. The year was 1656, and the artist Diego Velazquez was putting the art world on notice. Here is the royal court of Philip IV as it had never been seen before. The five-year-old Spanish princess, attended by Las Meninas and accompanied by her dog and two dwarfs, are guests in the artist's studio watching as the king and queen pose for their portrait. By giving prominence to the artist and other figures previously relegated to the margins of history, Velazquez makes manifest the underlying lesson carried forward from the Renaissance. Henceforth, in the modern kingdom of art, everyone will be a worthy subject. Looking at the concept of this, of the representation of a representation, in some cases of a representation, I've always felt that context is so critical to, in, in my case, finding the dark laugh in the most inappropriate place. And in the case of the pageant, we're literalizing that, but we're also encouraging the audience by taking that extra moment to contemplate something that they might not look at anywhere near as long in the museum. They would look and they would walk on to the next piece, and they would walk on to the next piece. Here we say, let's take 90 seconds. Let's listen to some music. Let's listen to some narration that informs what we're looking at. And then let's really enjoy that moment. And in our ADD world, this, this modern world where we, we're becoming more and more sped up and more and more encouraged to multitask, it's really a step backwards, but that's almost revolutionary. Let's go backstage and follow the remaining steps that go into recreating a painting by Winslow Homer. With the quick drawing painted background moved upstage, we bring our adjustable picture frame downstage. Next, the boat, mounted on a rolling wagon, is brought in from the wings and moved to its loading location. You'll notice that two of our volunteer cast members have already been secured into their places on the boat. Next, two more cast members enter and begin to take their positions with the help of the crew. Winslow Homer, one of the great chroniclers of 19th century life in this nation, created this painting for inclusion in an exhibition celebrating our country's centennial in 1876. It proved to be a highlight of the group show and went on to become one of Homer's most popular paintings. To assume their roles in this seafaring scene, the cast has already paid visits to the costume, headpiece, and makeup departments where our designers make every effort to replicate Homer's painting. 
But when all the cast members are secured, the rolling wagon is moved into its placement behind the frame. As the frame is adjusted to its predetermined dimensions, the side curtains are trimmed. And as this is being done, the painted background is moved downstage into its position. Now it's time to check the poses of our young sailors. Finally, with everything and everyone in place, all that's missing is the magic of stage lighting to complete our tableau. And so when everything is ready, the all-clear signal is given, and the stage goes dark for a moment. And now, four young adventurers set sail on New England waters in Winslow Homer's timeless recollection of a day spent breezing up. I will work as hard as I possibly can to make it not sound like an art history lecture. The goal is to say these artists made choices and live lives that really impact our lives hundreds of years later. The subtext of it all is that art has a place in all of our lives for something that is both theatrically entertaining for a general audience and also compelling for people who care and love art and that by exposing and literally making the metaphor of the living aspect of art. We bring art to life.